Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today we are going to alter some book pages. Um, if you have ever started a junk journal and you wanted to add book pages to it and the aged um, aspect of that book page is not what you would like for it to be or maybe you have a page that is the end or the beginning of a chapter in a book and you have a lot of blank space on it but you don't want to throw these away and there is just so much collaging you can do with um, book pages so I have you a little alternative so that you can still use these pages in your journals if you want to. So I have um, some book pages, a little tiny print that's pretty much covered up. Then I have book pages from a book where it had lots of space on the outer edges. And I thought, I really want to use the entire piece of book page in my journal signature. So um, how can I alter these? So that they have a little bit more interest on the empty white spaces and um, then be able to add them to my journals. These are some uh, ink dyed pages, book pages, that I did uh, not too long ago and I showed these in a video. They also have the iodine, the salt effect to them. So I don't know if you can see that bumpy stuff. That is where I had added the salt, just table salt, to the pages as they were still wet with ink. And then I laid other pages on top of them and that's how we got all of these little intric intricate details. Uh, there's some doilies laid on top of some of them. So, uh, these are darker and they are altered already, but I wanted to do even more to them. Now, one thing that is like one of the easiest ways to alter a book page, let's just take this one. It's got all of this, you know, empty space around the edges. So, we get our ink and we distress the edges. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my messy mat because I want to lay this page down, not just do just the edges. I want to lay it down so that I can get a really good um, deep messy dirty um, vintage look to this page. So see this is one of the easiest ways of course to alter a book page but for anybody that has been in my or on my channel visiting in here my videos and stuff you know that I'm not much for just doing one little thing and that being it <laughs> uh, I like to rough it up as far as the edges and dirty it up as far as the edges so see, then now you have this page that's a little more vintage looking. You've got it a little dirtier around the edges, like somebody has really read this book over and over and over. And then you just kind of go around on the insides of it just to uh, show that it's not just where you inked it, like it's not this perfect frame, you know, around the wording. Uh, here's another thing you can do to it. Crumple the page really well. Bring it back out. And then use your blending tool. And look at that effect. I love that. It's almost got kind of a burnt effect to it. I really love that. That's one of my favorite ways to alter book page. And then I'm just swirling it. And I'm not pressing down really hard. I'm just swirling around on where those crumpled corners and edges and everything 
were from where I wadded it up. Okay, so that is like my favorite ever way to alter a book page. And that covers up most all of your little um, areas where there's no words at all. And gets it very vintage looking to add into your um, journals. Now the other side you would do the same thing too or you could do some other kind of altering technique that I will show you in this video. Um, now to add it to a signature you're just going to fold it in half and that will be where you uh, sew it into the signature and when you're flipping through the pages so you have this nice torn rough edge and then do the same thing to the back side really really lovely I love that and something else you can even do to this I've got my watercolors out but all I am using is the black so I have one of my Arteza paintbrushes and a little jar of water and I'm just dipping into the black watercolor and if say there were words on the book page that you didn't particularly care for <laughs> uh, we've all ran into uh, books like that that we wish we would have looked at the pages a little bit better before we picked it up to use it we can always go through and cover up the words that we don't want seen or we can make our own little pattern papers by just a few little brush strokes these are kind of like little leaf prints but in black we're keeping it neutral for all of my traditional junk journal friends let's just keep it neutral here no bright colors on this one so that's all I'm doing is just using my paintbrush as like a um, template or a stencil and making little brush strokes and you can make them as intentional as you like or be more abstract if you want to do that and then let's do another row I mean you could actually if you are a great um, artist you could draw a scene on your book pages that is totally not me <laughs> you will not see me drawing uh, scenes on my book pages that's just not something that is in my wheelhouse that I'm comfortable with but little abstract doodles I'm good with that okay so you could go as far up as you wanted to um, not do anything at the top or bottom just do it in the middle however you would like to do that keep it as abstract as you'd like okay so then you have your book page all of the print and stuff in the back but then you have when you turn this sideways another reason why I did my abstract things that way is when you turn it to the side this is the way it will go into your half sheet journal and now you have what looks like either deer prints or little silhouette leaves uh, at the bottom of stems of flowers little hoof prints too I love that so then you would fold it in half and you've got something of um, detail that nobody else is going to have in their journal because you did it and drew it yourself 
Uh, you can do all kinds of things. Let's do what other colors have we got here. I'm just going to do darker colors, so more traditional colors, so nobody get panicky. Let's do some gray and brown. Let's do these two, okay? And on this one, I'm going to make some X's or some plus signs or crosses or whatever. And we're going to do them kind of randomly. And in little groups. So I'll do three and three and three and then we'll do another group of four over here okay and then go into our secondary color wash that off a little bit more all right secondary color and then you're just staying with the other grouping but doing one more than what you had so there was three of the uh, gray, cir uh, gray circles gray crosses so I did four of the brown so this one has three I'm going to do one less okay and then one more and one more okay so that just kind of gives a uh, extra little pizzazz to that page you could even come in and do other little accents like little abstract circles they don't have to be perfect just to give it a little bit more pizzazz I love it as is it's very elementary and it doesn't take a lot of um, talent to be able to <laughs> uh, get this achieved then of course when it dries let me get my rag so I can get that off my fingers then when it dries of course you can come in and um, do your inking around the edges now mine is not completely dry, so I'm going to try to keep away from my painting that I did. See, I smeared it a little bit there. I've got to wait for it to completely dry, but for the sake of this video, I needed to do this for you just to show you the end result. So just kind of dirtying up the edges and then, you know, come in a little deeper where you don't have any kind of drawing or anything and get character added to all aspects of your page so that way when you add it into your junk journal you don't even really have to do that much more to it if you don't want to or you could just add a simple little pocket onto one page or something and it'd be done and ready for your journals now see i smeared it a little bit there too but i'm fine that's okay okay so now you have this one of a kind because it's your creation and then you're going to once it dries of course fold it in half and add it to your junk journal and look at that i love that very pretty that's the back side of it i love that so, I will show you what these look like in a signature by the end of the video. I'm going to let everything dry, and I'll probably do maybe a few more little things like this, and I'll have to um, cover up the backs of them too. And then here's one of those pages that I had inked, and on the back side, look, we've got this big plain spot. Anybody else would probably just 
tear this apart and use this as collage on something but I want to use this in my journal signature so I want to do some kind of um, not a scene but <laughs> because like I said I cannot paint a scene to save my life but I want to do some kind of effect here so that I can still use it in my um, journal signature and if I fold it this way then that scene is going to be seen right here that scene that whatever I paint it's going to be right there so I thought about a few little abstract flowers now don't get all nervous when you hear me say the word flower I'm going to use this terracotta look here and I'm just going to kind of go in circles okay get my brush a little bit more wet and I'm just kind of going around going flat and then coming up flat then come up flat then come up flat then come up okay that's all I'm doing just a few little brush strokes and then I'll do another little one there and then get in there and do little ones in there Whoop. like that just kind of wispy okay so no bright flowers on our journal page it's just a kind of terracotta color and then you can go over the pieces that you've already done and you get kind of little wispies around there okay I like how that looks I think I'm going to leave that alone as far as the petals go now for the center let's see what this dark blue looks like uh, I say dark blue it's like a tilly color and anybody that knows me knows that I love that color okay I'm just going down with the tip of my paintbrush get it wet again just tip of my paintbrush like so and making my center I really like that color of course I like that color <laughs> yep all right then you go with <clears throat> one other color like this mustardy color here I like that and do a few highlights around just to make everything kind of stand out okay and I'm going to go around Do a few little highlights here and there on the petals I love that now you're going to make a little grouping so our big flowers this terracotta look here okay I'm going to make a mustard flower say the smaller ones are the easier ones so I did the uh, hardest one first and then we're going to actually run this one in to our bigger one okay and then kind of off the page there too and then go in again make some bigger swipes Okay, you're going to go around that middle. I like that. 
and let's go ahead and make our one more little flower over here to this side and let's do this raspberry color and maybe it won't be too awfully oh no it's good it will blend right in uh, when you're doing these flowers don't let the petals come together like a complete circle you want it abstract okay get it wet you want it abstract and if you're making a grouping like this you want it to run into the other that you make so that it looks very intentional like a little bouquet of flowers that you've created on your page okay this one is turning out to be a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be but it'll work out all right now let's do a really yellow center on one I'm just dotting with my paintbrush purple in the middle of this one and then just have some little accents coming out from it all right i think i want to use that pinky purple up here too that is a pretty color so then you have these little abstract pieces and then you've got this really pretty purple kind of mingled in to all of the flowers well I like that now let's add a few more petals to this one because it's kind of open air too much open air here and here and then a few more petals on the mustard one and then overlap that one onto that one okay I like that okay so now when this dries it's going to dry a little lighter I think and then I'm going to fold it in half and that will be the front of that page then you've got ink dyed page the rest of the way and then on the other side that is going to come through you could always cover that up with some coffee dyed paper or something and use that as a journal spot on the back side but that's another way I like to alter my pages when I'm um, when I've got my watercolor out anyway so three ways I showed you today to use your watercolor on your pages another way very simple is getting your book page and then getting a stencil or something um, that has holes in it this is a brand new stencil or has holes or a design in it's what I'm trying to get to there uh, this is a brand new stencil that we have in the shop at scrapbookingwithme.com this one is called Victorian ceiling because it's kind of like tile work beautiful so see it covers up most all standard book pages and then if you're doing a half sheet journal this covers up the entire page of your half sheet too so we made them for that so that you wouldn't have to piece your design together if you wanted to do a whole design 
Now, here is where the dome foam mini blenders come in handy because, let me take this one off, they will get into all the little nooks and crannies of your design without you having to work yourself to death to do it. So I'm going to get some washi tape and I'm going to tape this down so that it stays put, stays in place where I want it. But I'm not going to go over the design. So just a few pieces of washi tape. So that it's down really well and I don't have to worry about it moving too much. Now, if I put enough force into this, it's going to move. <laughs> but this helps it not to move too much. I'm using the walnut stain. And I'm just going to go in here and start pat, pat, patting. And just go all around until I'm happy with it. I don't have to do the entire stencil, the entire page, if I don't want to. I can just do a corner if I want to do that. Or I can do the entire design. But for you, just so that you can see, I am going to do the entire design on one side. On the other side, I'll just do a little piece and show you the difference. So we're just pat, pat, patting and going as dark and as heavy as we want. Okay, so silly me looked away for a minute at something. And my book page moved, so this is not going to be perfection, but it's not supposed to be, right? I love that. Does that not look like a tile ceiling of some kind that you would see in some ornate building? I love that. Um, and then I would do some inking around the edges. That was walnut stain that I did the stenciling with and then I'm going to go in here with um, Vintage Photo and ink my edges. Now some people do not ink the edges of their pages that they put in a junk journal. It's totally up to you whatever you would want to do. I just really think that that gives that finished look. Now if you're making a journal with lots and lots of pages in it, this is going to be one of the most time consuming parts, but I think it's worth it. Look at that, how pretty. And then you still have the wording in the background, but you've covered up all of that um, really unwanted white space where the words aren't, and you get to use the entire piece in your journal fold it in half and you would add this to your signature like that and then um, you know you could add a pocket to it you could add a little piece of coffee dyed paper just to write on or leave it as is I just love that okay then on the back side let's do that same stencil now like I said this is a brand new stencil in our shop my sister and her husband, their business that they have started, and um, we love it because they are making some of the most beautiful designs and um, products for us to be able to sell and offer to you in our shop. Okay, so I'm just going to do a corner up here with the walnut stain. And then a corner down here on the bottom. And this is where, you know, there's a lot of white space. So I'm just going around where all that white space is. Like that. 
and then I think I'll go ahead and fill that one in up there and then I'm just going to do just one little spot on that corner and let's see what that looks like we can always come back if we want to but I really love that look at that oh I love that so you can go as deep and as much as you want full page if you want or you can go just a few little pieces here and there if you want to I think I will do one more just so that I can get some interest here okay so I have 30 here and I have three here and then I have one there let's do um, another little one let's line this back up and let's do the circle here and then one of these little patterns here just to have us some different yep look at that and it looks like we've kind of framed the wording there I love how that turned out I love that let's do see I'm one to just keep on keep on and keep on um, I'm going to do this circle and this circle now let's see how that looks not doing the big pattern but going just in the middle of it right there mm, yep I like that too <laughs> uh, I could just keep on and keep on and keep on but I really do love how that looks like we have framed that and let's go ahead just with the walnut stain and go around the edges of this and dirty it up just along the edges if you've got a messy mat and we do carry these in the shop but if you've got a messy mat this is the easiest way I have found to ink my edges and get a nice clean ink look and I say clean I mean so you don't see the swirl or you don't see the circle on the edge of your page it's just easier for me to lay it down and just start swirling and then that way you don't see that so see that is gorgeous and when you fold it in half you've got this page and then you would fold back and you've got this page and this page so see this is going to be on its own page and this is going to be on its own page then you could add whatever you want to into your journal that is another way to alter your book pages beautiful in my opinion um, okay now the last way I'm going to show you in this video is the most um, detailed way and it takes a little bit more um, time to do um, it's the most involved way to hear less that's the way we'll, we'll say it it's the most involved way and we will show you on a dyed uh, piece and then a, just a regular piece from a book page and I have some stencils from Arteza that I had gotten uh, a few months back and I want to kind of position this in a way that I get maybe a little half design okay so I'm going to once again find my washi tape and I'm going to lay that down and then I'm going to lay it down there and there I'm sorry for the glare I don't know really what I can do uh, because my mat is glaring and then um, the stencil itself is glaring so there's how I've got it laid down you can see actually see the pattern a little better with the glare so I've got the point there at the end of the book page and then the little circle of the medallion there on the edge now 
what I want to do is I've got some um, Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide Spray. And I'm going to add this to some modeling paste. Now this is, this is Liquitex modeling paste. And I've got a little uh, spatula here. Uh, we have model it's not Liquitex because we can no longer get Liquitex for whatever reason. I don't know if they have stopped production in the last couple of years because of what's been going on or what. But um, we can't get Liquitex anymore. But we do have other modeling paste in the shop and it is just as good if not better than Liquitex. So when you go to our shop, just um, look for or put in the search bar at the top, modeling paste. I need to get this really good and shook up. I'm going to move all of this over so I can get this more in the center for you, maybe. Okay. I'm going, and you can use um, regular ink if you want to, the little ink refills if you want to. I'm just using this because it's what I picked up. Okay, just a little, maybe, what is that, a teaspoon of the ink. I'm going to wipe that off before it gets all over something. And then we're going to smoosh that ink around in our modeling paste. And you're just going to mix, mix, mix. So we are coloring our modeling paste. So a good heaping tablespoon of modeling paste. Okay. Back and forth and back and forth until we've got most all of it colored. And if you like uh, variegated colors, you don't have to get every bit of it colored either. And that way you have little white specks throughout your design. Okay, so I'm going to start and we're going to go really thin with this. So once we get it on, then we're going to start scraping it away because you don't want it really thick to go in your journals. And plus you still want to be able to manipulate this book page in other ways if you want to add a pocket or write on it or something like that. So you're putting it on but then you're immediately scraping it away and making sure that you kind of hold on. See I've got my index finger down here holding on to this book page so it's not flying away on me. And you go as high up on the design as you want or as far down as you want whatever you would like to do and then whatever color you want to do this in you could always just use vintage photo or walnut stain or espresso or any of those uh, browns that you want to or black or gray to keep it neutral I love green so I just decided to show y'all this that I would use green and I want it to show up pretty good so that you can see all the detail too. So there's the little point that I wanted to accentuate on this book page. So I'm really going to make sure that that's good and covered and it will show up for us. I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to go as far up as I can and show you every little piece of that stencil on there. So this is some 12 by 12 stencils that I got from Arteza and I will leave the link to these in my description box below so that you can pick them up if you would like to but I love them even if you don't work in 12 by 12 a lot and I don't anymore but I love that they're full designs and then you can use whatever piece you want to okay I think 
that's all I want to do on the book page from that stencil so I'm going to pick this up and then hold down the page at the top and try to be as easy as possible taking it off and oh my goodness how pretty that is look at that and then I made sure to keep it as thin as I possibly could there are some spots that are a little bit thicker but we'll still be able to fold it in half no problem once that dries look at that how pretty I love that and then once that has dried then I'll go around the edges and do my distress inking all around the edges of it also and then I could even use um, a little sanding paper if I wanted to if there was some places that were a little too thick and sand down if I wanted to do that now let me lay this stencil down because when I get done with this video I immediately have to go and wash those off to get that modeling paste off there because if you don't it will ruin your um, stencil and instead of wasting this modeling paste I'm going to mop it up with an index card I love that and then scrape 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 and you've got the background for journaling card or whatever you can add a few little die cuts to it you've already got some mixed media started for some index cards on this page so um, it's got all of that that is kind of not covered up with any kind of words or it's kind of plain so I wanted to do something to this side just at the top we could do like this and <laughs> add our washi tape down where we want it and now it's holding the book page and the stencil down so that's good I'm going to put another piece down there at the bottom and you can't see that but that's okay it's down there all right let's use a different color I think let's just use white just let's just do the white modeling paste and see how we like that whoop I need to wipe that green off now let's just go with some white if there's other um, colors that get in there I'm okay with that too okay so we're just getting modeling paste directly out of the tub and pressing it on and then kind of dipping down into the design so that we don't have too much modeling paste that's left behind okay so you kind of smush in there and then you dig down into it to get all of that excess because you don't want thick modeling paste on your book pages that's going to go in your journal because then you're going to have really really bulky journal pages and we don't want that if we want to make them bulky with pockets that's our design but I don't want to make them bulky just because I'm adding modeling paste onto them okay so I'm going to go all the way to the top of my page all the way out because this is the plainer look at the top there so all the way up and all the way across 
and then to hear that I'm scraping it all the way just to make sure that I don't have any thick spots and then I'm just going to go all the way across with a little more modeling paste and just kind of holding that page still just so it doesn't move on you and your design comes out pretty evenly now I just went through the stencil when I looked away again when you're doing this y'all don't look away <laughs> keep your eye on your page all right scraping and smooshing <laughs> and then any excess as long as it's white and you are good with if it gets mixed in with your old then you just scrape off any excess now there is a spot right there that's not covered at all really now remember this was one of those pages that I had ink dyed so it's not a white book page so this should show up a little bit better than if it was just done on a regular white book page all right reveal is always the most fun to me let's see how this turns out oh I love that look at that how pretty and then you see here when I said that I went under the stencil that's what happened when I went under the stencil but I'm good with that because it's not um, a perfect design and that is awesome to me <laughs> I love that so I'm gonna fold this in half and this would be the piece that you see when you first open up the journal that front page I love that okay I'm gonna let that dry um, of course you all know that I love the splatter that is another way to alter your book pages uh, but y'all have seen me do splatter before splatter art before I just wanted to show you um, a few ways that I alter my book pages without the um, splatter effect all right so a few ways I showed you today how I alter my book pages um, if I'm needing a little bit more of a hint of vintage or if I'm needing uh, a little bit of the book page covered up whether it be some words that I don't want seen or uh, some blank pieces on the page either the start of a chapter or the end of a chapter or if I just want some detail and this is some of the prettiest detail ever that you could add to your book pages now I'm going to let all of this dry and I will come back and show you uh, I'm going to put it into a signature a journal signature and show you how they look in the journal signature here are my pages that we just did in the video okay and then we're going to add these to a signature and I think I want this to be my first page in that signature so I've just got some ink dyed papers here that um, are regular uh, eight and a half by eleven and I'm going to fold them in half all together and then I've got a sheet of notebook paper I think I'm going to get one more of those from my stash and I see over here in my stash that I am pretty low on coffee dyed I don't have any I say pretty low I'm completely out of coffee dyed paper so I've got to get to work on 
getting some more of that done. Um, I think I want this page to be my opening page of my signature. So I'm going to fold that down. And then that's the one that we did the um, paste on. It was just white and I inked around the edges. That's all I did to it other than what you saw me do on the video. Okay, so right down the middle there, or close to, I think that looks good. And then let's put a doily in right there. And then let's put a piece of our notebook page. Let's turn it the other way and do my notebook holes at the top there and then another sheet of that and then let's do this one fold it in half and have it there I really love how that one turned out that's just so pretty love that okay and then another regular sheet because we want these pages to really stand out against those regular sheets that we put in our journal okay and then that sheet and let's do another notebook page and let's do the holes at the bottom on that one and then let's put this one in and let's put a doily in. Whoop, tore that one. Oh well. I'm good with that. And then another regular sheet. Okay. And then, hmm. I think I want this to be my middle of my signature. So I'm going to fold it this way. this one in next. Oh, I didn't ink the other side of this one. I'm going to put that in there. Fold it in half. Like so. And then another regular page. And then the middle of our signature will be like this. I love that. That's very pretty. Um, on this green, if there's anywhere that looks a little too bright to you, I've done some of it here on the edge, but you can go in with your ink and your little blending tool and go around and just hit the highlights uh, of that piece and kind of vintage it up just a little bit more if you want to. like that that's pretty I like going in and doing just little pieces here and there all right then we're going to line this up really well hold in the middle and fold over and then make sure that is folded all of it really is folded where we want it to be I like that outside like that. I'm usually not um, a big one to put a small piece on the outside of a journal signature, but that's pretty. I like that. So when we would um, flip through, of course we can add any kind of decoration, borders, pockets, whatever, to these plainer pieces. And then we have this little dolly and the little notebook page. Um, we're empty right here. We might would add another piece of something um, right there or just leave as is and add pockets or tucks to both of these pages. Then you've got that page and you've got your flower page and then there is your little 
deer hoof or <laughs> uh, leaf and I didn't ink the back of that I can go back and do that before I put all this together and then that page and then you open it up everything's going to be sewn together and then that will have either your binding um, how you're going to do your binding or you can sew it and I would really like if I have a heavy duty heavy duty needle to um, do sewing down through there just so that it catches all of these little pages but I think that is so pretty to dress up your book pages that you add into your journals so I hope that this all has given you some ideas on what you can do to kind of doll up your journals without too much effort I think the um, modeling paste was the most effort of all of it but um, I think you get the idea you can do whatever you would like but that's just a few ways on how to dress up some plain book pages I hope you got some ideas and we will see you in the next video y'all have a blessed day and God bless see y'all bye